Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Walker Ford in super sunny Clearwater, Florida, and we have that off-road vehicle that all of you have been waiting for. We have finally gotten our hands on it. This is the all-new 2021 Ford Bronco. Our particular one is the Wild Track. But before we get into this Sasquatch of an off-road vehicle, let's talk about what's going on here. The Bronco. It's been around since 1966, if you could believe that. It's making a triumphant return after being gone for quite some time. Now, what's fascinating is that over the years, the Bronco has been that super off-road go-to for so many enthusiasts. There have been smaller Broncos, there have been bigger Broncos, and everything in between. Now, for 2021, with the return of the Bronco nameplate, Ford really wanted to make basically an SUV for everyone. So we've already seen plenty about the Bronco Sport, that baby Bronco. Now we have the full size, and not only do we have the full size, but with it being that wild track edition with the Sasquatch package, this is gonna be that extreme off-roading machine. Now, of course, the main competition is the mighty Jeep Wrangler, and they have every right to be that mighty brand because Jeep has been around for 80 years. But now the Bronco nameplate is split back. Has Ford done enough to make it get to the top of the heap over all the rocks, mountains, sand, mud, and everything else? Let's go ahead, let's dive into our Bronco Wild Track and find out, is it worth the price? And is this the competitor to get over the mighty Jeep Wrangler Rubicon? Let's find out. Right off the bat, the color, rapid red, this is exactly the color I would choose on my Ford Bronco. Starting at the front of the business, you are gonna get a little bit of gloss black, and I am surprised that they went that route. Now, it looks good sitting here at Walker Ford. Over time, I'm curious how this gloss black is gonna wear, but I do love the way Ford did the full LED light treatment. You're gonna have your LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps. I love the way they brought the lighting into the grill. We have the Bronco name, bright white. It just pops out from that gloss black grill. Functionality on the bottom and up on top, and you do have a forward-facing camera. These are crucial for when you're going off-roading, especially rock crawling. It's gonna help you get a bird's eye view. Now, as we drop down, you're gonna have these massive gloss painted black tow hooks. This is gonna help you pull those Wranglers out of the mud, out of the sand. I like the way they hollowed out the corners of that full metal bumper. And then the center area also has functionality here. I don't know if Lori could showcase the horizontal slashes in there. That's actually gonna be an active door that opens and closes depending on where you are taking your Bronco. Now, with this, being the wild track with the Sasquatch package, you're gonna get the ultimate in ground clearance. 11 and a half inches of ground clearance. Plus we have, do you hear that? Ow, that hurts. We have metal skid plates all the way back to protect all the inner bits. And that's why this would go up perfectly against the Wrangler Rubicon because that Rubicon trim is that rock crawling off-road beast that this is trying to topple from the top of the mountain, but really love the amount of ground clearance. We're sitting on 35 inch tires, but why don't we climb back on up to the hood? Love the style, super clean the way it meets the top portion of the grill. You have a nice fold and then you got a little bit of a bulge. I like having some bulge there. What they do is they put this anti-glare strip here. It's flat black. Not only does it cut down on the glare hitting the windshield, it looks good and it has the wild track name in there with a little bit of a mountain range coming around the bend. All of these fine details tie into the original Ford Bronco and I think that's why this is gonna be a hit. Nobody really does retro styling better than Ford. You look at the 2005, 2006 Ford GT, you look at the Ford Mustang, they really know how to take new and blend it with the old to get that connection for us. Coming around the bend, here's what I was telling you about. Sasquatch package, we have these beadlock off-road wheels, 17 inch gloss black with the Bronco logo there in the center, 35 inch Goodyears that are gonna help get through just about anything. 315 on the width, 315, 70 series sidewall. I'm gonna have Lori show off 
all the great suspension work there. You got your upper control arm, Bilstein dampers all four corners, really did a great job with the suspension, with the ground clearance, and definitely this wheel and tire setup. Fender flare, absolutely ginormous. How far the fender is flared to cover those massive Sasquatch setup of a wheel and tire. Flat black, I think is great because it matches perfect with the front bumper. And these are gonna take a nice beating. You can see all the classic lines. Look at the peak on that fender, just like the original. Everybody's gonna get a badge of honor on their Bronco. This one, Wild Track Sasquatch, lets you know what trim it is. You got gloss black on the mirror caps, which is another weird area that they decided to go gloss black. You do have your old school antenna. And here's why I'm not gonna zonk it. Ford has done their homework. They talked to Bronco owners and they said, what kind of radio do you listen to when you're out doing your, your thing in the wilderness? Many people said AM and FM. You actually get better reception with that antenna than with the shark fin antenna. And that's why on Ford F-150s, F-250s, and on this Bronco, do we have the old school antenna because they listen to the potential owners and the people that are gonna buy this Bronco. Now the mirrors do fold in. We also have 360 degree cameras all the way around. You can see our camera in our passenger window uh, mirror here in the side cap. And then you can also see how it's connected to the actual vehicle. Kind of unique how they took that part and then brought it over to really blend it in. Now going down the rest of the side of our particular wild track, we have the standard on wild track trim, the removable hard top. Obviously the Bronco comes with a soft top standard, but when you check off wild track, it automatically comes with that hard top. Love the body line. Like I said, from fender into door, color matched on the door handles. Look at the side stripe, just like that anti-glare stripe on the hood. We also have some stripe on the side with the wild track badge and these Bronco specific. Bronco specific stationary running boards. They actually have the Bronco name on there. It does help with this package to get in and out, having those running boards for people who are shorter. Continuing towards the rear, I like the way they went flat black on everything, didn't put a bunch of gloss black up top. Remember, all of this is removable. Doors, roof, the whole shabam. Coming towards the rear, you can see that amount of ground clearance, like I said, 11 and a half inches of ground clearance on the Wild Track Edition. And then as we come around back, this is where you're gonna get more of that classic Bronco style. If you notice the taillights, LED on those taillights with the B. They did that on purpose. It's meant to look like a B, B for Bronco. The badging is spot on the money. Obviously we have the spare mounted to the rear and we're gonna show you once we open up this rear tailgate area, what we got going on. But let's go ahead and drop down. You got full towing capability. Look at how where you have your towing capability to the right of that. You have your exhaust tucked up very, very nicely. Everything real clear to allow you to get through just about anything. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood on our wild track Bronco and see what's powering it. All right, guys, we do have the hood popped. You do have a prop rod. I'm not gonna zonk it because guess what? The Wranglers also have prop rods as well. Now remember, comparing this wild track not only to the Rubicon, but also to the Wrangler Mojave, that Desert Runner, what do we have for an engine set up on here? So we are actually gonna have the bigger of your two engine options. So what are we looking at? First of all, there's no engine cover, which kind of surprises me since obviously people are gonna take these in dusty, dirty areas, and it kind of leaves everything exposed when it comes to the wires and tubes and everything else, but you're looking at a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. So what that means is it's a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, 310 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque. It is mated to that slick shifting 10 speed automatic transmission, zero to 60 on this thing, even with the 35 inch tires is 5.9 seconds. MPG 17 in the city, 20 on the highway. You could tow up to 3,500 pounds and the vehicle weighs 5,320 pounds. Now, if you're comparing this to the other engine, you can get the 2.3 liter inline four EcoBoost engine. That's a single turbo setup that you would find in the Ranger, the Ford Mustang EcoBoost, and of course the Ford Focus RS. Why don't we go ahead, let's fire up our twin turbo V6 and hear what it sounds like.
guys. We're inside this wild track Sasquatch Ford Bronco, all new for 2021. I know you're at that point where you're saying, Joe, I've been waiting for this forever. It seems forever in a day. How much is it though? So remember, this one's a wild track Sasquatch package, lots of goodies. You're looking at an MSRP, a little over $58,000. Let's compare it to that Wrangler Mojave and that Wrangler Rubicon and see, is it worth what we're getting for the money to the door panels? I do like what they did. It's not just all dark black. You have some of that nice tan material, which is soft touch, both at the top and on the armrest there. The rest of the door panel is hard black plastic, which the good news is will be able to be cleaned very easily. You do have a cargo net where maybe you could get, I would say uh, two hot pockets you could slide in there. And then if you see the word lift at the bottom, that's because remember the doors are fully removable just like the Wranglers. Now, when we go from the door panel to the dash, you immediately get an oh crap handle, which is nice. They recess the AC vents, which are also the letter B for Bronco. In case you forgot how to spell Bronco, they actually stamp it right here for you. Coming to the center stack up top, you got the ability to lock the front diff, the rear diff, shut off the traction control. This one does not have the accessory bar where you can mount GoPros. That would be a nice extra touch in here. But look what we do have, over 12 inches. That's a 12 inch infotainment system. It's the new sync system, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, navigation. You have your separate screen. There's a Bronco, in case you forgot what the front end looks like. You could scroll through a cornucopia of information. And then obviously you could go into your different features, do your zone lighting, turn on the lighting, all 360, really nice. And the sync systems from Ford are very intuitive. I don't know though, the Uconnect 5 in the Wrangler, actually I should say technically the Uconnect 4, I feel like is a little bit more intuitive. And even though this screen is larger than what's in the Wrangler, there's something about the way that it's mounted in here that I'm not in love with. Just a little bit too much hard plastic. But uh, let me throw it into reverse, see what the backup cameras look like. So there is your camera out the back with your trajectory. We got our 360 degree camera. Obviously we've been showcasing that. You could count all the gravel that's sitting in the asphalt of the parking lot here, but it's very easy to get through the different camera angles. I feel like the cameras in the Wrangler are just a little bit more clear. And then obviously we can go full panoramic. Look at that, that's, that's a nice touch there that they did. Put it right back in the park and we're right back. Now, you'll notice the start stop button looks just like the headlight. You see the design there with the line, just like the headlight. You got actual knobs for your radio, for the AC, dual climate control, heated seats, but no ventilated seats. But that makes sense because remember, everything is removable. You got your official Ford Twinkie tray, three Twinkies plus USB-C and a USB. That's a nice touch. I do like this riveted plate that they have here with your VIN number, letting you know that it was built right in Michigan. And then this is gonna control our 10 speed automatic with the Bronco badging on it right there and the American flag. That's another nice thing. Just like the Wrangler, there's a ton of Bronco Easter eggs all over this thing. You got another oh crap handle for your passenger. I'm confused what the blue is about, why they brought blue into the trim on this setup, but two cup holders, flat black. Let me show you your key fob. It is Bronco branded, which is a nice touch. Flip it around, you got your remote start. And then of course we have our go over any terrain knob. So you're gonna switch this for the different modes. Plus you go from two high to four low to four high. You got your hill descent control, all nicely done in this single knob area. The Zonk for me is the materials. I feel like the center area on the Wrangler just feels a little bit better, put, you know, well put together. This kind of, I don't know, it just feels a little bit too much plastic, but you have all your window controls that are inboard so you could take off the doors very easy and you could adjust your mirrors. This thing is as hard as a rubber ball. And I don't know if you ever got hit in the head with a dodgeball. I think if I hit you in the head with this center arm 
console cover here, it probably hurt just like that dodgeball, but you open it up, what do we have? We have the optional Ford safe. Let me do the code, don't look. Open it up. Yes, look what we got, a full bag, family size bag of Skittles. Keep those locked up away from the sticky fingers. Close that up, seats. Love the leather style material, the way it's got the Bronco kind of embossed in the back of the seat. The two-tone looks great. Full electric assist for the passenger and the driver. And then of course, we have more of those accessories. The Bimini top with your zipper storage here. Put a Twinkie up here, look. You don't believe me, look. Put the Twinkie up there so it's bouncing around. Also, up top, we have our auxiliary switches. Nice touch. You want to put a winch, you could use it to operate your winch, exterior lighting, whatever you got. Big old air horn, one of those train horns. You want to scare everybody. And then, of course, all the panels are going to come off. I'm six feet tall, plenty of room in here. Coming over the business end, I want to show you behind the wheel of our Bronco Wild Track. All right, guys, Bronco time. Come on in. You got your power seat controls. Easy to get to down there. One, two, three, get it set up perfect exactly the way you want. Lots of comfort. Steering wheel, nice leather wrap, good thickness. I'm so glad that they came up with such a beautiful Bronco logo. Looks classy, but also 21st century. Flat black on these rubber style bump, uh, buttons, which I think is gonna be perfect for when you have the roof off and the mud is coming in and the water and everything else. Flat gray looks clean. You do have a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then the dash, very cleanly done. Now I wish it was all digital, but what they have is an analog speedometer. The rest is gonna be digital. And look at how you go through that eight inch screen here. You just turn the knob and you got all your different modes, normal, eco, sport. You keep spinning it, spinning. Slippery when wet, the Bon Jovi mode. Now we're going to go into four by four because we're going mud and ruts. You keep twisting sand and all the way to Baja, baby. Enter the Baja 500. Love the graphics. Love having that flexibility. And of course, when you go into different modes, the different goat modes, it's going to adjust everything from throttle sensitivity to the 4x4 system, the whole shabam. But why don't we get in the back seat? Because we got four doors in our Bronco. Let's see how your passengers are going to like going off road. All right, guys, back seat time in the full size Bronco. Remember, I'm six feet tall, plenty of headroom, even with the bimini top kind of drooping down a little bit. But we have that leather style material all the way around the back. Got decent pockets. You could put some polished stones, maybe some fool's gold if you find some, and you could really fool your friends. That's always a lot of fun. Center area, another place where it feels a little cheap. First of all, putting this no step here, is somebody really gonna use this as a step? Probably, but it looks just kinda, I don't know, something institutionalized. You do have your window controls inboard, just like up front. You have a home power source and two USBs, actually a USB and a USB-C. That's nice for connectivity. You can see how much leg room I have. You sit nice upright and with the flat roof, plenty of room, plenty of visibility out the front and you have the world's smallest armrest because this is it. That's where you're gonna rest your arm, right here. So basically it's a two cup holder rest, not really an armrest. I guess what you have to do is make sure you have somebody smaller than you that you could beat up, give them a punch right in the kidney, they'll bend over and then you use them as an armrest. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the cargo area and see how much we could put in this box. Right, guys, comparing this to the Jeep Wrangler Mojave and the Rubicon, let's see how much storage space we have. You're just gonna pull on the handle, swings open, just like on a Jeep product, and then we lift up the rear glass. This one actually has a couple more accessories that have been added by Walker Ford that were sent with this particular demo. The first one I wanna show you is this little, uh, sort of like camping table. Really nice touch. You're just gonna lift up on the brackets, pull it down, and now you have a wonderful metal table here to do just about anything. You could fillet a fish at the campground. You could do your tailgating. I like the way it's got the Bronco name that's kind of cut into the actual metal to put it away. One, two, three. And that's really the great thing about the Bronco is there's over 200 Ford approved accessories for this vehicle. Let me show you another one. We have the actual lockable metal Bronco cargo box. Watch this. Open it up. You're just gonna push, slide open what we got. 
You got plenty of Twinkie storage in here. You can see all the separate compartments, separate your Twinkies from the other snacks. Theoretically, this would be perfect for somebody who's into hunting, camping, fishing, or just really that snack monster, just like I am. You could really load it up, and the best part is you can lock it and keep those people with sticky fingers out of your snacks. Closing it up, the rest of the space, you actually have usable storage. You could easily put, I would say, four Costco hot dogs, still $1.50. They did not have, they have not raised the price of their hot dogs since 1985. You also have another storage area over there. You could actually put a small Nerf football that was signed by Tom Brady, and there's a 12 volt. Plus the seats are gonna fold down. You'll see up top how we have that rapid red rollover bar because you could remove all of that wonderful roof there. It's cargo space, you're looking at 22.4 cubic feet of space. Open everything up, up to 82.7 cubic feet of space. And then when you wanna hit the roads or go off-road, you're just gonna close everything up and you're ready to rock and roll. But if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's mount this Bronco and go giddy up on throttle in it. All right, guys, we're leaving Walker 4. We're in the 2021 Ford Bronco Wild Track on throttle. Here we go. At 10 speed drops down and we are off and running. Very, very fast, smooth shifts. And it is so surprising that for a vehicle that weighs this much on these 35 inch tires really gets up to speed very, very nicely. Now, visibility out the front is phenomenal. You see the two peaks of those very, very tall fenders. I have it in sport mode because we are on the asphalt jungle here but back on throttle here we go drops down and we are off super smooth all right guys i think one of the things that i really love about this bronco is that the way that it drives um it, it definitely seems more planted on the asphalt than a wrangler rubicon or a uh, wrangler mojave and that really just gives it a nice sure confident feel as you're going down the road good feedback to the steering wheel good sensitivity and the fact that it's got so many modes i mean that really is going to separate it from the rest of the pack i guess the the question is is can ford you know build the devout following of hardcore bronco enthusiasts like the wrangler has that's that's the big question but uh, I think with the way they have this interior set up, definitely bringing the technology piece for sure. And getting to the infotainment system is so easy. You have physical knobs as well. But while we go on throttle, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Driving the Bronco. I tell you, it, it's, it's fun in all conditions, whether you're driving it on the asphalt, whether you're driving it off-road, it really has a great, fun feel to it. And that is what I think a lot of people are gonna gravitate to and what a lot of people want. They wanna have fun when they're driving and as a car enthusiast, that makes me super happy. People need to be having fun while they're driving. Brakes feel good, stop on a dime, give everybody some horse manure. Pulling the right way here. Here we go. On throttle. <laughs> we got the 2.7 liter. That's for sure. It's gonna be. I'm gonna be curious to see what the 2.3 is all about, especially with a manual transmission. I think that would be super fascinating for sure. All right, guys. Let's do a little bit of off-roading here. Nothing major, but uh, just to show the suspension travel. Look at this. One, two, three. Easy peasy in this wild track. Really, really nice. The suspension action, uh, action and everything. Look at this. Really, really well put together. Going through this field here. Easy peasy. Look at that. So simple. Nice. Lots of fun. And this is obviously nothing. I mean, this is just a grassy field, but 
Just wanted to say, hey, I took it off-roading and just had a little bit of fun with it, but on throw, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Kick it up a little dirt, you know, you gotta have a little fun, right? Nice, nicely done in this freaking Bronco. But this is what makes it so great is that you can be silly, you can be serious, you got it all. And then we're back on road again. Then you could go right back to too high all by the press of a button. Nice setup, easy to use. All right, guys, let's go on throttle from a dead stop. On throttle, here we go. Getting the power down. Smooth shifts. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> tell you just a fun freaking vehicle no matter what on the brakes 10 speed is downshifting very nicely look at that so well done I think definitely in the engine department that naturally aspirated v6 from Jeep just can't hang with this EcoBoost that's for sure suspension damping is awesome uh and just everything else that whole big puzzle comes together and it's just a, a fantastic piece but uh we're gonna wrap this one up and get back to walker ford so i'll see you in a split second another great day here at walker ford definitely want to thank frank walker weston walker tracy austin greg the whole crew here so accommodating got us their very first Bronco right off the truck and what better way to do it than a wild track edition for that desert running for that rock crawling let me know what you think is it worth the price what this wild track with the Sasquatch package comes in at would you rather have a Wrangler Mojave or a Wrangler Rubicon over this wild track edition put that in the comment section if you're new to the channel and you're on the, your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you and the channel, click the first link in the description, become a Radies Rise Patreon member. You get to see a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Click the second link, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to the queen of the camera. I know which way she would go. Can you guess what Lori would take a Wrangler Mojave or Rubicon or this Ford Bronco. Put that in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for being the muscle behind the camera and busting your butt out here. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.